Okay, so so this is the outline. There are actually seven items that I want to present for my presentation. In it, this is the outline for my topic today. Uh, introduction to elite and then uh, blended learning criteria. So this one is general one. Most of all already uh, know about that one. And then we start on uh, seven items. Okay, so Elip, uh, I think every one of us now has already have the Elip page for the course that we are going to teach for this semester. So we can check on Elip. Do we have Elip for our course or not? If not, you can contact Elip Help Desk. So this is the email and the number for us to call the we believe will uh, react very fast. Okay, so blended learning achievement for our faculty. So uh, last week, I think last week or last two weeks, I have uh, forward, I went forward an email from CAM about uh, blended learning evaluation for last semester. And our faculty has achieved 92% um again the target uh, that we have set up 70 percent so initially they said we only achieve 85 percent but after a uh, re-evaluation process so we have five more courses which were also in uh, considered as uh achieve blended learning status so we have 65 over 71 courses will achieve blended learning. So this means they have uh, 92%. This is for last semester. And for those who want to know more on e-learning policy in must you can check on this link up here. The, this is ebook, so you can download it and you can uh, read. So this is blended learning criteria. So I believe all of us already know about this one basically uh, what we have done last semester we achieved the criteria most of us those who are not achieved actually they stuck at activities and assessment so maybe you need to uh, look on how to achieve for this uh, part activities and assessment so they need minimum for activities three items with student participant uh, participation and for assessment minimum two items with student participation okay um so now um move on to the first item that i want to share with you uh i don't want to touch about the thing that we have already known last semester for example zoom on how to do um synchronous or asynchronous uh, lecture on Zoom, on Webex, uh, Microsoft Teams, and so on, because we have experience on that one. But we can explore furthermore for those who think using Zoom or Webex have problem with students, especially their connection. Um, maybe because I, I check the Zoom and Webex require a lot of bandwidth. So maybe some of our students don't have that privilege. Maybe we can use other platform like online uh, means live, YouTube, YouTube live, Facebook live, or IGTV. So uh, this is optional. So up to you, okay? So first on how to go in live on how to go live on YouTube. So you. So you can go to YouTube channel and then okay, I have a video prepared before that. You need to go to YouTube link and then you go to the uh, plus button up there to create the video. Okay, so when you click there, so there are two options, either upload video or go live. So you choose go live. And then you need to put on the title 
of your present uh, of your uh, live video so it's up to you maybe this one is for um what you call that for pollution water pollution so you put it there and then you need to choose who are going to watch your live video if you choose public so everybody can search and view it if you choose unlisted only those who are having your link can view it that's make you uh share the link to your students and then they can go in all right then you come up like this so this is a screen preview you can change the category uh, by click edit button and then change the category to the category you like and maybe education uh, there are also kinds of technology category okay so when you are ready, uh, when you are live, so you say that you are live and then you can check uh, uh, how many minutes you have li live and then uh, the viewer and uh, chat box if your student leave something there. And then if you finish, you just click end stream. Okay, but for uh, YouTube, before you want to live, you need to request them uh, permission at least 24 hours before. Otherwise, you cannot straight away go live because there is a uh, like policy for YouTube because they don't want a uh, robot or something, not you. Okay, so next one is Facebook, Facebook Live. Facebook Live can also uh, share your slide and also your picture. For Facebook Live, actually you need to have Facebook account. I suggest you have an account special for your uh, for your course so that it will not mess up with your personal account. So how to go live, when you go to Facebook, you will find live video there and click. And then straight away go here, you will choose use camera and you start screen share. And then you uh, you can set up who can see your uh, Facebook live, the, your friends list, uh, or everyone on Facebook can uh, can watch your Facebook live. Okay. So you can add title and then you can go live. So when you share screen, usually your camera that show your face will disappear because it will show you the screen. Uh, you can open another uh, software i use loom so that my uh, face will always on top of it so this is overlay on facebook if you see my uh, face in the circle here so because i use i use loom Abunda? loom l o o m there's another software if you want to know more later i will show you on how to, to, to use that one so senang saja sini okay so, uh, if you finish going live, make sure you end, end your live video. Otherwise, we start uh, apa nama ni? It's going on. Uh, nanti terakam ni semua kan? So, make sure you click end live video. So, okay. Kalau you nak guna Zoom and then in Facebook, so you need to choose stream. Okay, so for Instagram, so Instagram there is no live, but there is IGTV, Instagram TV. For this one, you need to uh, pre-record your video. So IGTV allow you to post uh, maybe to up to one hour or more, minimum fifteen minutes for IGTV. Maybe you can uh, maybe you want to create one 
Instagram for your course because you want to have something you share with uh, the public. Okay, so next is WhatsApp. The WhatsApp is one of the low bandwidth um, tools that we can use on teaching and learning. So I, I believe that every one of us, including our students, has WhatsApp. So we need to create, first thing, create WhatsApp group. So you can create WhatsApp group and share the link in Elite so that students can add themselves in your WhatsApp group. So we don't have to save all numbers, uh, all, all students' numbers. So they need to uh, add themselves in the group. And so here I I give five tips on how you can use WhatsApp effectively in teaching and learning. Let's say our student has problem with internet. Uh, let's say they, they, they are from Sabah. So you know Sabah now uh, very strict um, PKP. So they don't have, maybe they don't have privilege to use internet something. So we can consider WhatsApp um, to help us to organize our teaching and learning on WhatsApp. So tips number one, use hashtag for every task that we want to give to our student. So for example, you can use hashtag assignment one or a hashtag task one. Um, like this one example, like hello, you can give a brief explanation what you want to ask your student to do. And then you uh, inform them, please use hashtag uh, task one for your answer, for example. And it's easy for us to go back and to check uh, about this one. Tip number two, we can check the read receipt from info to know who has not read yet the information. So this is an example. Um, we want to check about one uh, post that we, uh, we put on the group. And then we hold that for a long time. You need to click the three dots up there and then you click info and then you can check who has read and who has not read yet. Uh, and after that, maybe we can ask the student why they has not read yet or do they have any problem and so on. Okay, uh, tip number three, we can set rules on, uh, on using the WhatsApp group. Maybe what time? The WhatsApp group only open from 8 to 5, for example, and only post the thing related to the topic. Okay, tip number four. Every time we post our lecture or learning material, we use voice note to give some brief explanation uh, because it's easy for students to, to listen to our explanation in brief rather than open the whole thing. And put label. The last tip, you can use label uh, by using emoji, or bold, italic function uh, consistently. Example like this. This one, for example, you want to set all lecture notes or lecture materials uh, by using emoji book and bold it like this. And then after that, come up your uh, material. So it will be easy for students to find out what, uh, every time they saw, uh, every time they see you, uh, you post something using the emoji book and bold so they know that there is learning material. That is uh, how we can teach effectively on WhatsApp. Okay, next is Miro. So this one, uh, if you want to do activity with our student, um, Miro is like Padlet. Uh, because uh, Padlet now, they have restrictions, so we only can post maybe three to four Padlet. And after that, you need to pay or use uh, to open another Padlet. So <clears throat> we can use Miro as option. So when you open it, it will give you a blank canvas. Okay, 
So when you go to miro.com, okay, so it will be like this. And we ask you, there is a new board. So we need to click new board to start a new activity. Okay, so this is the template that Miro has from my map, uh, brainstorming, concept map, and we also have Kanban. Kanban specifically look like uh, Padlet. Uh, so we can choose one of the tablet that they have. Okay, so can, uh, this is Kanban framework. And you can see how uh, it display. So in the uh, student also can uh, present uh, in Miro uh, and then they can ask question here uh, using the chat box and also they can scribble, they can uh, write something while we are explaining or when we ask them to do that. So this is Miro. Okay, we can use, uh, Miro also has sticky notes and then maybe uh, we can ask students to put some information from there. So just drag sticky note from here to the part that they want. <clears throat> we can use Miro uh, for ideation and brainstorming or to show the workflow, uh, mind mapping. Okay, so the next item is Telegram. So Telegram uh, works like WhatsApp. So, uh, some of us do, do doesn't like WhatsApp, they prefer Telegram. So we can use Telegram. Uh, you can we can download Telegram desktop so that it will be easier for us to uh, monitor and also to uh, put information there. Because it's quite difficult to use mobile phone to put a lot of information. So download Telegram desktop. And then create group for our class. Um, okay, let's say you want to create quiz on Telegram. Um, you can go to the three dots up here. When you open the Telegram desktop, the day, there is three dots. And then you choose that one. You, uh, click create poll. And then tick at the quiz mode. Uh, so... Then you write your question on the question and give the answer, a choice of answer in poll option. And then it will ask you to give reason for your correct answer. Okay, so this is the example. Uh, this is the question and this is the four option and student can choose which is the correct answer. And immediately explanation also will pop up when they uh, answer. So we don't have to worry, students, will not be able to see the answer until they, they try to uh, until they are uh, until they answer it students also could not see other students uh, answer all right uh, so telegram is uh, is straightforward it's similar like whatsapp as well uh, and then canva so canva Canva.com, uh, you can use this one if you want to create a poster for your class or you uh, you want your student to create poster or you want them to create posts on Instagram, Facebook, even to create a video, create for our own video in uh, teaching and learning or student want to create video for the uh, video presentation, for example. So it's I think most of students now I think know how to use Canva because it's very straightforward. So this is how we can use it. Go to canva.com and then you there are in the inter, interview we have okay, so we see Canva first. So they have a lot of templates for videos, for posts. Uh okay, this is Canva, how it looks like. So there are a lot of templates like for presentation. For poster for animator and so on so for example we want to create a video so just click video and then there are a lot of templates three templates here for example educational video so we can choose one 
and then we can edit this uh, from this template. If, if you have our own uh, template, that is okay. So if, don't, if we don't have any idea on how to start, so choose from the template given and you can start edit here and there. So the best thing all about Canva is we can uh, change the photos we want photo we can upload our own photos here uh, we can choose the text here and also insert music and video the background so some of it uh, apparently is need, we need to pay it like if you see like crown uh, icon like this so this is for premium so we need to pay but don't worry there are a lot of free uh the material that we can choose from okay so this one we want to upload uh, our own picture for example the video and audio and so on that is for canva next is fixton fixton is uh, the software online software that help us to prepare comic style uh, let's say we want to create or in attract student interest to read our learning materials, or maybe we also get bored by prepare only, you know, slide uh, from PowerPoint and then we want to have to try a different way to so use comic style, uh, maybe one of the option. So Fixton, uh, Fixton.com. So we can go to Fixton.com. Uh, this is the one that I have um, tried. Baru di Okay, so this is Fixton.com. Okay, so you can choose for educators uh, if you are using it. And then I will bring up to login. So usually uh, there are two types of login by using Google account or create an account in Fixon. So this is how it looks like. So my classroom, uh, if you want your student also to submit their work on uh, means the comic style. Uh, my comics is our work. So for example, this one. If you want to start a new comic, click new comic here. And then if you want to edit, just click edit. And it's, this is how it look like. So they have all the templates from background, characters, focus, words, uh, uh, how our face will look like. So you can see that some of the background uh, or the features have locked. So lock me, we need to pay. So we can choose those who are free. So characters, we can add uh, how many characters in our comic. So for my comic, I add only, uh, I use only two characters. And then when you're done, you click done and then it looks like this. You can share your comic to your student. Either you want to download and save uh, in PNG or JPEG. Or you can also print and save in PDF. Just share the link. Okay, so you can also share the link here to your elite so student can uh, have access to your uh, comic uh, straight away from 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 elite. Okay. Um. The, the last one uh, that I want to share is on how to use Google Site. So this is very interesting because I think some of us uh, plan to use uh, e-portfolio or portfolio based assessment. So one of the options, this is the simple one on how to uh, prepare portfolio on uh, Google site. So first, you need to open Google site. Um, it also can be used as you want, if you want to create course file, for example, because it's neat and tidy, it has neat and tidy arrangement. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay, so this, this is the the free template that they have we can also choose the blank template if we want so for example we want to create a portfolio so choose portfolio 
and then we uh, come out like this so what we need to do we just need to change like this one we add content so you want to change the picture with your own picture uh change the name of the portfolio uh put your name or logo and then also a lot of layout that we can choose from we can also embed video or pictures or anything from other uh, website or software uh, here on, on how we can select image either we want to find from google or we want to use our own uh, image so here we can put label on every section and this is a template you can put presentation uh, picture video including video from youtube it's like copy paste everything and put it here nicely so we can add more layouts uh, if we want to put more just click plus button there and then uh, maybe upload the thing that we want or choose youtube link so that it will appear here and then put some caption down there but if you want to ask to our student to use google site to prepare their e-portfolio we must make sure uh, we have given the clear instruction on how you want them to do that otherwise they may get blurred or doesn't know what to do and the best thing is okay when you want to when you finish you need to click public here so it will ask web address so this address uh on, you can choose for example you want to write a portfolio uh e-portfolio for course uh sta 1043 for example so you just type there the web address okay uh next next you can choose who who can view your site so you if you doesn't change it it will appear to anyone if you doesn't if you don't want to uh, let anyone to view it you can click manage here and include only the specific uh, name or address here you can also choose either you can edit or just view as a viewer or you can also share the link to them uh, so only those who have the link or who are invited to see can have uh, the privilege to see it okay so another one is here let's say you, you don't want let's say you you don't want um, your course file or your e-portfolio or your student e-portfolio to be found on the search engine so you need to click or you need to tick this part search setting so when you tick this one that means um, your your work uh, cannot be found on the search engine so, so this means it have a uh, privacy for us okay so this is an example of my uh course file that i have tested and uh, to, to do it by using google site so how it look like they are uh we can we can see it we can view it in mobile uh interface or tablet or desktop view so let's so let's say uh use the desktop view because i use the desktop so it will look like this okay so like this i put the the title here and here and the explanation and also i link um I put a link to my TV here and then I put all the course outline, course plan uh, here. Actually, they're still loading here because yesterday my internet connection was not good. So that's why um, it's, it seemed like empty space, but actually they have information there like this. 
So we don't have to print out so many things. And also we can put all the students' work. Or to, uh, this is if you want to use it to, uh, to create course files. So for your student, maybe your student can uh, record every single activity for your course on uh, Google site so that it can be as an e-portfolio for that particular course. Well, e-portfolio can be considered as a pedagogy in the 21st century. And also, students can share it uh, with their group members. Let's say they need to do it in a group work to, uh, to uh, come up with one uh, e-portfolio. So they can share just now, say that publish or share with those who can edit. Um, and then they can start editing between each other. Uh, so that's all from me. So I will stop sharing and uh, look on the chat box if I have. I already see some questions. Uh, Dr. Mulder said, student will not get access in it. Um, student has, uh, all students have access to ELIP. So this one, if you want to uh, use outside ELIP uh, activities, to link to ELIP, but make sure you link back to ELIP. But this is just my uh, what's the advantage of Telegram compared to WhatsApp? Which one can hide phone number? Mm, what advantage? Okay, Rotafa, maybe I will uh, answer your question about this to Telegram and WhatsApp. Uh, they say that Telegram can share bigger size of file compared to WhatsApp. Um, can hide phone number? I'm not sure. I will check back. Maybe we can do that to hide our phone number from students. Maybe not. Um, if we use these tools, how come? Okay, so if we use all of these tools, we can put on uh, to link back on Elite. Okay, okay, so for example, so this is the course for this coming semester. So already half year, I haven't edited anything yet. Um, to link to ELIP, so we need to click at an activity or resources. Let's say we want to, for resources, we can use this URL. You click at, and then you give the title, for example, um, Maybe quiz. You want to say quiz on what is now? Quiz. Okay. So we just now we use zero. Uh, zero activity. So, <clears throat> and then you need to uh, give the, the link for, for your tool just now here. And then if you want to put this search in description, it's, uh, also you can put. And save and return to course. Okay, let's say. Okay, let's say I want to share this one to copy. And then, okay, so paste the external URL and then save. So come, we see from there. So we, uh, it's better for us to name it so i usually i will name it like if i use padlet i will put padlet activity or quiz on um a kahoot for example so that it's easy for them to calculate that uh, so say so the mirror activity so they will count it as activity if you put their uh quiz quiz on padlet or quiz on quiz is so they count it as um uh, assessment So maybe external tool or external, the easiest way is URL, URL here. So that, that's why when we did not name it clearly, sometimes come miss out and then not consider as achieved blended learning status because they have no, uh, for many way, there's no way to check it automatically. So they need to check manually for outside or external tools that we are using in our teaching and learning.
Okay, okay Dr. Maya said that telegram pun tak boleh hide phone number tapi telegram tak banyak guna phone memory compared to WhatsApp. Oh, okay, so nanti uh, thank you Dr. Deng Siri. Nanti I, uh, I find information on how to hide phone number on telegram. Okay, um, do you have any more questions before we move on to the next session? Uh, thank you for all the questions on the chat box. Yang telegram tu saya cuba cari information macam mana cara untuk hide phone number uh, daripada student tahu phone number kita. So, kita, saya faham kadang-kadang student ni tengah malam pun ada juga mesej kita. Tapi apa yang saya buat, usually saya tak balas within uh, bukan office hour. Saya akan tunggu pukul 8 esok paginya untuk balas. Walaupun mereka bertanya pada malam hari. Kecuali hal kecemasan. Itu yang saya buatlah sebelum ni. Uh, okay, thank you very much uh, for listening to my uh, talk. And then now, the, I will pass it to Dr. Rafi'ah. Dr. Rafi'ah. Okay, Dr. Rafi'ah. Yes, Assalamualaikum. Alright, okay. Yep. Uh, thank you very much everyone. Thank you very much uh, Dr. Farah for uh, the introduction just now and for sharing uh, the tips and tricks how to conduct uh, a very efficient <coughs> online learning for this coming semester. Um, what I'm going to share this afternoon is just an experience sharing based on what Dr. Shaukat and I has been doing for our SULAM course. Um, last semester, we have conducted a, a service learning course or what we call it now SULAM, Service Learning um, service learning Malaysia University for Society. So SULAM is the acronym for uh, Service Learning Malaysia University for Society. Previously, it was known uh, as Service Learning. Um, normally, we would do our service learning uh, in uh, a face-to-face -face setting. For example, we go to the community and conduct uh, the project with them and our students learn from the community as well as the community get something from our students, some takeaways for them to improve uh, the current situation. But during the pandemic COVID-19, we are uh, forced to do is sulam a replacement for our face to face sulam project um luckily e sulam is not something very new to me um i have uh, known about e sulam uh, for a long time however there is no justification or no uh, you know uh, no situation which requires us to do the E sulam. E sulam means you conduct the service learning projects on online setting. All right. So for environmental chemistry two last semester, because uh, this course is a full sulam course, meaning to say that um, most of the assessment they are not based on written exam. They are not based on pen and paper exam. There is no midterm, there is no final exam, um, but it is not also a fully dedicated uh, course for entire SULAM assessment. Meaning to say that for this course, we conduct 70% of the assessment uh, for SULAM project and 30% of the assessment comes from the case study. Right, what is e-assessment? assessment is the use of digital technologies for us to create, distribute, assess and provide feedback for our students for formative, summative, diagnostic or self-assessment. Meaning to say that all online assessment or we use technology for assessment um, that is called e-assessment. In the case of environmental chemistry two, these are our alignment for the course. We have 10% uh, 
allocated for Sudam project proposal, 20% allocated for reflection because for all Sulam courses, they are required to have reflection component. In this case, we have reflection one, which is done before the service learning uh, project. Reflection two, done during the service learning project and reflection three, after completion of uh, the service learning project or the Sulam project. Okay. Uh, for reflection, we mainly use ePortfolio as the platform for students uh, to put on the reflection, to submit the reflection. And 10% uh, of the assessment is uh, allocated for community evaluation. Last time when we go uh, doing this Sulam project with the community face-to-face, -face, most of the projects are related to training and uh, consulting with the community. So the community uh, representative will have the chance to evaluate our students and uh, our students will get feedback from the participants of their training from Google, uh, Google Form and so on. So our students have to analyze all those uh, feedbacks and uh, they have to report in, in their final report. So this is allocated 10 marks for them. And then uh, we have uh, Sulam video presentation. Mm, which summarized the whole eSulam project uh, with less than five minutes, in less than five minutes. Then we have final Sulam project uh, report, 20%. This is a digital report, includes the video, the digital pack. Um, in this case, uh, for this semester, for, for the last semester, uh, some of the students, they did uh, not only campaign on social media, but they also provide digital pack containing uh, good practices for their community partner. So these are the digital pack. Okay. And then the project implementation report, evidences, for example, minutes of meetings, community evaluation form, relevant photos, testimony from communities, and so on. And uh, this all... Um, are seventy percent of the um, assessment weightage. Another thirty percent come from uh, case study analysis, which is also an E assessment, which I will um, explain in detail later on. The bottom line for E assessment that we make sure that we have rubrics prepared for the students to form to make an inform. A decision on how they will uh, answer the questions, on how they will conduct the project, so that they will have a chance of learning based on the rubric given. Right? Uh, for example, we prepared uh, rubrics for the proposal, for the reflection, for community evaluation, and then uh, we have also rubrics when we conduct the case study analysis, and then for the a Sulam final project uh, uh, report and also their presentation. All right, let me just brief a bit about uh, the eSulam implementation as, um, as the immersive learning experience for our students in uh, environmental chemistry too. Okay. So the possible plan for eSulam is uh, by conducting them through websites, blogs, online forums, social media, for example, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and they can also conduct Isulam through YouTube and many other relevant platforms. For some of the groups, um, they conduct Isulam through online meeting platforms such as Webex or Zoom for them to meet their community partners and discuss uh, the com community needs and um, some of the activities done online with uh, the targeted community. We have 119 students, which we further divide uh, into 12 groups, maximum 10 members per group, and they have 12 different projects. So they don't have the chance to copy each other because they uh, they have different projects. Um, Dr. Shaukat and I um, 
conducted first the briefing for Sulam project because we within seven percent of their assessment uh, marks. So it's very important for us to clearly brief the students on how this project are going to be conducted. Then um, for Sulam project. Um, it, it, it evaluated for CLO1 and CLO4. For our Sulam project this year is about communication and public awareness on single use of plastic. A different year, we have different uh, different theme. Uh, last year, we have a theme on community composting. But this year, the theme is on communication, education and public awareness on use of plastic. Initially, the plan was to go to schools around Kota Samarahan uh, to conduct a Sulam project with the students. And we already, in fact, we already have the um, permission from JPN, Jabatan Pendidikan Negeri Sarawak, to conduct this uh, project in several schools in Kota Samarahan. However, um, we changed the plan after we quickly actually change the plan once we know about the COVID-19 pandemic and we uh, MCO uh, uh, happening. So we quickly change uh, to ISULAM so that our students can prepare to do ISULAM, not, uh, not something that they are not uh, certain about uh, whether they want to do face-to-face -face or uh, half face-to-face -face and another half uh, online we straight away convert it to fully online. So the objectives of the ISULAM is to conduct uh, conduct the SEPA on uh, plastic among Malaysians now uh, via online uh, platform and to enable students to apply their knowledge and learn theories on which waste management project in a uh, community setting and to strengthen university community collaboration in waste management projects. So in this uh, SULAM, we uh, mapped the project into four sustainable development goals, uh, quality education, clean water and sanitation, sustainable cities and communities, and responsible consumption and production. The project period was between uh, the 1st until 31st July 2020 uh, on online platforms. Um, the online platforms, the kind of project that they want to do, the specific title, we let the student decide, right? But we give them the general idea on how this uh, SEPA project can be conducted. So the target community is the public online community, uh, or we call it uh, netizen now, and or they can select a specific community, for example, a specific community partner, for example, restaurant operator, canteen operator, they have the choice that uh, for this. So we ask the, the, the students to be in group and they determine their own milestone as long as it is between the 1st to 31st July and each group is required to present their project plan to their own uh, course instructor before the 1st of July, either via online meeting platform, email communication, or WhatsApp. So we outline what are the general activities that uh, they should do, but we leave it to them to de decide how they are going to do it and what's their own uh, specific timeline, as long as they deliver the project on time. Uh, these are the options that were given to the students. The first option is they can either uh, do a digital pack for community education and public awareness campaign on the theme reduce single use of plastic. Uh, so each student, each groups will be required to produce a digital training, training material and hand over the digital pack to their community partner. Engage online with the community partner on the impact of digital pack uh, that they have uh, done, and uh, they report about the about uh, the Sula, Sulam project. Or option B, they can do 
social media community education and public awareness campaign video um, on the same theme and each group will will be required to produce the sepa video launch social media campaign uh, engage with netizen on the assigned topic and produce and share their report so these examples we give the students we give to the students uh, of possible sulam projects but at the end of the day we leave uh, the the final decision on the topic uh, on the groups themselves so examples of online communication with public community are through media, twitter facebook group zoom seminar webinar or other online platforms um, and examples of online communication with specific community online is via a Zoom meeting, Wayback training, emails, Telegram group, and this is specifically for small group, right? Uh, this side, uh, the list of actual Isulam projects conducted by the students. Um, they design their own campaign, they design their own poster, and they select their own uh, community partners. So, are uh, on uh, reduce uh, single use of plastic waste or how they can uh, reduce single plastic waste plastic waste uh, for example by bringing their own grocery bag, um, operation plastic innovation where they turn plastic waste into something else um, which is useful and then the campaign on solution to plastic waste problem they have this chat less plastic challenge uh, and to have digital digital pack on good good practice for reducing single use of plastic and uh, have this uh, men's environment menstrually friendly to reduce um, you know uh, waste uh, regarding to this and also other types of uh, campaign in terms of budget, each group were allocated 100 ringgit is William project. And the purpose of this budget is uh, to help groups to improve participations from the online communities. For example, through uh, quizzes, competition, and so on. So the examples of uh, expenditures they are allowed to do is uh, for example the prizes for quiz and competition and the postage of the prize. Hello, doctor, doctor, Pia. Yeah. Uh, yang budget tu siapa bagi ya? Who gives the budget? Uh, the budget uh, was given by Unimas Sustainability Center. Oh, so many from the faculty, faculty macam tu lah. Uh, we every every sulam course. Okay. Uh, each semester, they are allowed to apply for budget oh, okay, to conduct okay. Okay. some Okay, okay thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, these are the expected impact uh, that we tell our students. Uh, they should uh, bear in mind uh, is increase awareness on single use of plastic among the target group and knowledge transfer on her handling and management of plastic waste at individual and specific community level. So these are other supports that we provide our students for the ISULAM projects. Um, for example, if they need to use Webex or Zoom to organize formal training or meeting, uh, they can inform us. Um, and if they need official invitation letter for invited speakers or specific community partner, we will assist them on this. And uh, if they aren't unsure about any part of the SULAM project, they can consult us as well. So these are the supports that our students uh, may be conducting uh, eSULAM project because they admitted that uh, conducting SULAM in an online platform is quite challenging because they have to meet their group members online and most of them have different uh schedule so it's quite challenging for them and uh, we even have uh to solve some of the groups you know uh, some, some you know disagreements on some issues and so on 
So this is quite challenging, which these things uh, were not faced before when we are doing face setting of uh, Sulam. Uh, besides Sulam, which uh, 70% of the assessment weightage, we also have online uh, case study analysis where students were given three case study questions to be answered. Uh, it is an online but asynchronous open book assessment, uh, which students must complete in 24 hours. Uh, and all questions require students to think <coughs> critically to analyze and suggest innovative solution to the given cases. Of course, for case study analysis, uh, also we have to prepare the rubrics uh, and give the students earlier the rubrics so that they are uh, aware of what are the aspects they need to answer um, for the case study analysis because that this case study analysis will give them 30% of their marks. We use the online case study analysis to replace their midterm. In the case study done through ELIP, students need to uh, upload their answers uh, in Google Form link, uh, which is in ELIP, uh, on the specified time. All right. Um, how the e-assessment can support online immersive learning experience? In our case, students were given general topic and timeline to work in for the ISULAM project, but they have the liberty to implement their own project, they can select their own title um, and they can have their own timeline. They can, they have the liberty to, to, to design and implement their own project. Uh, however, uh, still within the theme, uh, which is uh, reduce single use of plastic and uh, some other boundaries uh, that we have set, for example, uh, the 100 ringgit, uh, what can they spend for that and what cannot? And uh, what are the online ethics that they have to, you know, bear in mind when they do their ISULAM project, right? Uh, they initiate their own group meetings, timeline, uh, they select the target community, they design their own campaign, they do their own copywriting, they promote their activities, they engage their own activities, and they also conduct uh, analysis on community perception on specific issues and community feedback. And Students were also teaching discussion, presentation. This one, uh, when we are at the beginning of this course, where we still have physical classroom, um, we, we embed blended learning uh, with physical setting. So they choose and design their own online tools for curating knowledge. We give them topic, we give them specific topic, they function, and they curate their own uh, online learning tools and share with their peers. And uh, students were given case study to work individually a limited duration, uh, which is 24 hours in an open book assessment. So through this e-assessment, they actively learn how to search, how to filter, how to construct their own knowledge during the process of finding innovative solution to the issues given in the case study. So through these activities, um, and, and the last one, uh, the reflection activities, uh, we give questions and um, we give questions not only on, uh, on the surface uh, thinking that requires surface thinking, but questions which enable the students to critically analyze their learning, how to relate theories, the real thing they are experiencing during the Sulam process. And uh, this reflection activities actually help our students to develop a sense of commitment and responsibility, not only towards their, but also towards their teammates, the environment, and the community. Um, we have, in fact, read a lot of uh, reflections written by students saying that before this, they don't think um, Plastic issues are very serious, but when they start doing Sulam project, they not only think about uh, the future of the environment, but also the future of the uh, generations. All right. And then uh, we can see the improvement of CLO 
uh, from previous semesters. Uh, in 2017 and 2018, um, the this is this is always been a sulam course. But in 2017, 18, we still have final exam. We don't have failure, but uh, we have very low, uh, CLO achievement for uh, CLO one. And we don't we still have midterm exam. Uh, we have higher CLO achievement, but we have failures in uh, the recent one, the recent semester, which we conduct uh, conduct e assessment. We see the improvement. CLO achievement of students. So these are the expected skills uh, for the students that we hope already achieved uh, by completing our course. Uh, for example, the group discussion and presentation, we hope that from this, uh, they already develop some sense of interpersonal skills, communication skills, lifelong learning skills, and thinking skills. Um, and from case study analysis, the lifelong learning skill, thinking, problem solving skills, and from the reflection, we hope that they uh, develop critical skill, personal skill, and from ISULAM, interpersonal skill, communication, lifelong learning skill, critical thinking, problem solving, digital skill, and content creating skill. Um, if you look here, we uh, really designed this course in order for the students to have future skills, which is important for their career uh, in later life in their uh, upper uh, life after graduate yeah so these are some of the students, uh, feedback from experience uh, these are some of the short uh, uh, reflection okay the positive impact uh, that they have from their campaign uh, that people started to be aware plastic waste not only could be reduced they need to create something useful and then must, my most valuable experience during our Sulam project was when we received a lot of positive feedbacks and many joined our contest from Instagram community. There were many people, many who watch our video and felt the awareness on how to reduce plastic waste. All right. I felt proud that I contributed my best for better future. All right. Uh, these are some of me. Um, Dr. Farah, do we still have uh, time? Uh, yes, sir. we still have some time. Okay, I would like to share our ELIP uh, platform we use for uh, conducting the e-assessment. This is a very humble ELIP, actually. Nothing special. Can you see it already, uh, Dr. Farah? Yes, yes, it's clear. Okay, uh, this is actually uh, the ELIP uh, page. It's very humble. Uh, the blended learning indicator also only two stars. However, uh, I would uh, to focus on how the e-assessment was uh, conducted. Uh, if you look at here, uh, we we specifically show the student about service learning. We put all the rubrics there early uh in the early or, or the beginning of the semester for students to know what to expect from each uh assessment okay and then uh we have also discussion this is the real time uh assessment however it is not counted in marks and then uh this is where they submit their reflection. The first reflection, they submit it through Google Form. But the second and the third reflection, they submit it via uh, e-portfolio link. And for the Sulam final report and video, they submit it through Google Drive. These are the case study analysis. So they download first the case study analysis and they submit it through Google Form. Of course, we also provide them with the rubrics to help them to answer the question well. And then um, 
All right, we we ask them to to submit their isulam minutes of meeting here as well. And then uh, these are some of the examples of students work. These are how the students put their minutes of meeting on on their e portfolio. And then these are example on how student arrange their uh, e portfolio uh, for their minutes of meeting and their reflection two and reflection three. These are examples of students project. Uh, this is snapshot from their report. So they reported on their Instagram activities. What are the things they put into their uh, Instagram? If you look at how they arrange content, it's very interesting. They put it in such a way that it's like a jigsaw puzzle. When you put it together and people see the uh, the overall view, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. So I think it's very uh, nice way how they organize their uh, online project. And these are some of the uh, rubrics that we have. Uh, I think um, if you if you are interested to know more, uh, I can share with you uh, the the rubric uh, for those who are implementing uh, Sulam and so on. But uh, for the time being, I think uh, that is all. Uh, I can humbly share. Um, I think many of you did a uh, better uh, project or e-assessment. It's just that today I have the chance to share mine. And I hope uh, later on we can have the chance to hear from, uh, from you, from our other friends in the faculty. Thank you very much for listening to me this afternoon. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Uh, thank you very much for a very nice presentation and knowledge sharing. I think uh, some questions on the chat box. Who specific uh, community? Um, some two to question that was conducted by our um, Social media, for example, Instagram, whoever for them is their community. This one we call it public community, public online community. And another type of community uh, is specific community partner, people, canteen operator, where our students handed them digital pack on how to do better uh on the uh, plastic use for example plastic packaging plastic food packaging straws and so on um how to do waste audit our students uh are with them um the restaurant owner the grocery shop owner so these are called specific community partner all right and then uh, um oh we have uh, our friends from Udayana University, Bali, Indonesia. Thank you, Dr. Lu Suryani, for being with us today. I don't think we have any questions. Any more questions? Oh, all right. Can we consider social media community as community in Sulam Project? Uh, Dr. Farah, yes. Uh, digital report, is it done in e-portfolio? Uh, no, not for our course. But actually, um, if you want, you can do it in e-portfolio so that all the records for the Sulam project is in the e-portfolio. Um, and another thing to note that when you ask students to uh, use e-portfolio to submit their assessment, you don't have to ask them to make a new e-portfolio. They can use their existing e-portfolio. For example, for the first year and second year students uh, in our faculty, they already have the e-portfolio that they prepared for uh, PPD 1041 and 1032, which is credited co-curricular and also kemahiran insania. Actually, we can use that existing portfolio. It's just that we ask them to add another tab for our course. In this uh, in this case, we are actually helping the students to develop their own 
portfolio which they can use uh, for them to show their future uh, employer or future clients and their learning experience, collections of their learning experience. That's how I see it. Uh, so uh, most of my students in this case, uh, for the second year students, they have a portfolio from uh, Kemahiran Insaniyah just now and also biochemistry. I tell them, actually, you don't have to have so many e-portfolio platform. You only have one block, but you have uh, you have to divide it and make categories properly so that it looks very nice uh, on your block. So we all actually can help the students to collect the evidence of their learning through e-portfolio. And this will help them later uh, in their career. All right. Any more questions that I missed? Dr. Farah? One more question from Dr. Mulia, so I saw from the chat box. Students in online are not in the same place. How did you make the group? How did they perform the activities in a group? Yes, I would say this is kind of challenge uh, mentioned by most of the students. The challenge is they have to really uh, you, they have to really make appointment with each other for them to be in one place together th in a meeting. For example, if they want to conduct a Zoom meeting, not everyone will uh, be able to listen uh, because they have different schedule, different learning schedule. So what they did sometimes is uh, they are very clever because uh, you know what? This is their playground. Internet is their playground. So they are very uh, savvy about it. So they don't wait for all of the group members to be able to attend. But if they have majority 80% of the group members can attend and the other two can uh, look at the recordings of the meetings. I don't even have to tell them to do this because uh, like I said just now, is their playground they are better than us in this playground so we just let them uh, conduct their own learning immersive learning and we give them liberty to do that as long as uh, they are within the boundaries that they should be all right okay thank you doctor uh, thank you very much Dr. Rafi, uh, for very nice thank you Rati Bara. thank you everyone yeah it's very interesting i get a lot of information and ideas on how of the next one okay <clears throat> uh okay i also want to welcome our participants from indonesia so we have dr nilu Suryani, i think dr farmawati and also dr ria Dupiani. thank you for attending our webinar as well okay um so now we move on for the uh, next sharing presentation uh, by Dr. Nurashikin Suhaili. Dr. Nurashikin has used Jubilee and Pichelo in her teaching and learning previously, and she also won the gold medal in Telic 2020, uh, I think, for this, uh, for this one. So uh, I would like to invite Dr. Nurashikin to start and share the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Farah, and uh, for the introduction and for inviting me to this session. My today's presentation will be on the introduction to Bitly and Spishello, and I would focus on how to use these uh, two softwares for creating teaching and learning materials. Okay, so this is the outline of my presentation. I'll start first with Dudley. Uh, first on the introduction, what, why, and how to use Doodly, and then some tips and tricks of using Doodly, and some examples of uh, Doodly videos that I have created during my uh, previous course. And then the second part would be on the Spishello, uh, how to use Spishello, and the final part would be how to integrate Spishello voiceover into Doodly and PowerPoint. Okay, let, let's begin with Doodly first. So what is Doodly? So basically, Doodly is an animated Doodle software. So if you see, there are two different concepts, animation and Doodle, right? So if we say animation, it can be as simple as PowerPoint site. So that is animated. But uh, And Doodle, on the other hand, is just like drawing. It can be a static picture. But we com when we combine these two concepts, animated Doodle software, so perhaps what comes to your mind is uh, how the Doodle is drawn 
Yeah, so it's, uh, it's being animated. And Doodly is the software that creates the video that shows how the doodle is uh, drawn. So basically, if you see the picture on the, uh, on the right here, so there are hands that draw the thing. So basically, that's how Doodly works. So just to give you a brief taste of Doodly, I'll play this video. So that is how uh, a video created using Doodly looks like. And yeah, back to my presentation. Um, it's an animated Doodle software. The mechanism is drag and drop. So having said that, it's a very user-friendly software. Uh, you don't have to know how to Doodle uh, in order to use this software. What you have to do is you just drag and drop and the rest will be drawn by the software. So the applications of Doodly is very wide. One of them is education, marketing, campaign, social media posts, and etc. So in this presentation, I'll focus on how to use Doodly for creating educational materials. Before I go into what, uh, how to use Doodly, so let me just like highlight some of the advantages uh, of why we have why what are the advantages of uh, educational videos that we create by ourselves. The educational videos, it can serve as asynchronous DNL materials, which are useful for remote teaching and learning. We can, uh, I like to see it as a long-term investment for the educators because we can use the materials again and again. And it's not just for the current uh, students, for the current course, but we can always um, share it, not just for the students, but also to the public uh, via social media. Um, and then, in terms of the ownership, we have uh, easy control on the content. We can create whatever the things that are best on our points of interest, rather than if we rely on other sources, um, we have to just like uh, uh, evaluate the content and see whether it matches with our interest or not. And then being our own uh, videos, uh, one of the biggest advantages in terms of the commercialization potential, we can claim that the videos can have the potential to be copyrighted, repacked as e-module for reselling in the future. So I think these are the advantages of creating our own educational videos. And then why Doodly? Doodly is not the only animated uh, software. It's one of the animated software. Uh, I didn't do extensive review about animation software. So I just share some of the benefits that uh, I do benefit from uh, using Doodly for about a year now. Uh, it's the simplest drag and drop Doodle creator. It has uh, modern, attractive features and user friendly. So uh, you can actually just like create the videos right away uh, even you just attempt it for the first time. So that's based on my experience. And then um, we know that animation can capture viewers' attention better. It's very engaging than compared to the print materials. And in Doodly, it has the hands animation that can depict a human touch. So we feel that uh, we feel that the the things are quite natural, yeah, compared to just a simple animation without. Uh, the hands animation. So I would like to share with you uh, a survey. Sorry. I'd like to share with you a survey that uh, I got last semester when I taught environmental biotech course. So this, I, I used Doodly uh, throughout the course. 
and I share daily videos uh, on Instagram, on YouTube, and also on Elite. And uh, what I found out is that uh, they agreed, uh, the students agreed that the daily videos facilitated better understanding on the topics rather than uh, the lecture notes alone. So that is the positive feedback that I received from the students last semester. And then uh, being an animated software, uh, Dudley is very useful for explaining scientific processes. For example, mind map, flowchart, complex scientific mechanisms, biochemical pathway, uh, chemical reactions also, uh, especially those processes that involves uh, stages or steps that needs to be explained uh, in sequence. So I think that is the one of the potential application of Dudley for scientific communication. Okay, let's see how uh, Dudley works. So these are the basic steps of using Dudley. First, we have to plan the storyline or the content beforehand. So what I mean by the content here is uh, the images, uh, the messages or the things that you want to put on, this, uh, on the video. And then what you have to do is on the Dudley, you create a new canvas and you drag and drop the images, voice over, text or music. And finally, you just edit, save, export the file, and you can share the video on various platforms. So this is the steps. You don't have to even know how to draw, but they can, uh, the, the software can doodle for you and it can create a very engaging animated doodle videos. Right, so let's have a tour on how uh, Doodly software looks like. Once you have the Doodly application uh, on your computer, it is not available in the mobile application, unfortunately. So you can only download the uh, desktop application and it can be only used on desktop. So this is the interface of the Doodly. So this is the home. You can see the list of the videos that I have and these are the files the folders containing all the uh, videos and then in order for you to create a new video you can just click this so there's a selection you can choose either whiteboard chalkboard uh, black or green glassboard and for this custom it has uh, two things the first one is in terms of the color you can customize the color and the other one is in terms of image you can upload your own image from anywhere that you download. So for example, if let's say you don't want to use bots, you want to use a uh, landscape as the background. So uh, for that case, you can browse the files and you can upload the file into the Doodly. Right, so other things here are like uh, this one. If let's say you are posting the video on Instagram or Facebook, you can choose this. Right, so let's choose a glass board. So this is another interface. Um, so you can see that actually this is the only thing that you have to uh, mind about Doodly. So it's very self-explanatory, I can say. Uh, you can explore and you can use directly without even um, extensive tutorials. So some of the elements here, this is scene. So scenes means like background. So if let's say you want to choose this scene so what i meant just now by drag and drop is you just drag the things and drop it on the canvas so that's how it looks like okay so that is scene the second part here is characters um, these are all the default images provided by Dudley, but you can also upload your own images or uh, your own characters right so this is the thing you just click on the button the plus button over here, right? And then this is props. Uh, the same thing, you can upload your own images, right? So the original images from Doodly is not that really much, and it's not that really related to my uh, videos. So that's why I use a lot of imported images. So I imported all these images from Canva, right? For example, here, this is like the bacteria. So if let's say I, I want to use this, where right? I just drag the things and put it on the canvas. Okay? And on the canvas here, you can adjust the size. So that's how you drag the images, characters, or even the scenes. Eh? 
And next to the props is uh, text. So the original uh, fonts available, there are only three. So these three and the rest I uploaded by myself. You can also upload the font, right? Just click the plus button. And then if let's say you want to add the text, uh, you just drag the things over here and put it on the canvas. Double click to enter the text. For example, welcome to And then uh, what you can do next is you can insert background music. So this is sounds. Uh, you can also add your own MP3 files. So this is where you will uh, add also the voiceover files, which can be created using special. I will talk about it later. So the original music from Dudley, uh, there are quite a lot. I can say quite nice as well, like for example, this one. Okay, so that's the example. So how you want to drag the music, the MP3 file, let's say just take one, okay, this one, okay, you just drag it to the bottom section. Okay, so I forgot to introduce here. So this is the, uh, the place where you drag, uh, where you drop the music file, okay, so it has the music icon. And you can control the volume, let's say you don't want it to be too loud, perhaps like 40%, 50%. Okay, you can adjust here. Right, so next to sounds is marketplace. This one I don't really use because this one you can, actually you can buy images, but I don't think so it's necessary because you can upload the images uh, using uh, this feature. Okay, so perhaps that would be not be so uh, useful. So on the right side here, what you can, C is the save preview export button. So the preview is for you to preview the videos, right? If I click this, it will show to you how uh, the video is drawn. Okay, and then, um, for scene setting, what you can do here, you can set few things. So you can choose if let's say you want to change the bot, you don't want to use glass bot anymore, you can choose uh, other bots, right? And then you can choose whether right handed or left handed hand. So this one is uh, the options and then the real hands or cartoon hands. And for this one, this is subtitle. Uh, you can add the subtitle. Uh, I think this would be useful if you have the voiceover. Sometimes the students might not be so clear about the audio, so you can add the subtitle here. For example, here. So how it looks like, it will appear at the bottom of the videos. Okay. And then uh, the last part here is the uh, is is a place where you can set the timing uh, for the images to be drawn. So there are two things: delay and duration. Delay is the gap between one image to another, whereas duration here means uh, how long the images are drawn. So that's the two things. Uh, you have to play around with this thing if, let's say, you want to control. Uh, the duration of the video. Perhaps you don't want too long and then you can just shorten the duration of the uh, images. Okay. All right. So basically that's what to do. You can see that it's a very simple software. It's very user-friendly uh, and very self-explanatory, I can say. Okay. Let's go back to uh, my slide. Uh, I'd like to show you some tips and tricks of using Doodly. So just now I mentioned about the images. So you can import images from a royalty-free image site uh, like Canva or Pixels. Uh, I like Canva because uh, the images are transparent. Okay? So I can easily paste it on any surface. So if let's say I paste it on Blackboard, it doesn't have the white background. So that's what I like about the transparent images. And then voiceover, you can use computerized. 
or on voice. Okay, uh, I will talk about computerized voice uh, in Specialo later. Uh, the challenge with the voiceover insertion is you have to sing the voiceover and the animation. So you don't want the voiceover to go too fast or the animation to go too slow. Yeah? So that's the thing that you have to play around. Uh, and you have to play around with the duration of the images that I mentioned just now. All right, protect your videos. Uh, you can add personal logo, name, or watermark in order to just like label your videos uh, from being used uh, by other parties. Limit the video to a maximum of five minutes. I like to just uh, create videos of within like two to three minutes. So because we know that human attention span is short. Uh, so we don't want the students to be so bored and at the end, they don't actually benefit from the video. Uh, and also, if let's say you want to post on uh, Instagram or Facebook, uh, like Instagram, the post, uh, the duration of the post is just up to one minute. So if it's more than one minute, it will go to IGTV. And if let's say it is uh, on story, it would be like just 15 seconds. So you just have to think about later uh, the platform that you want to post the videos, whether or not uh, the duration of the videos that you create is suitable or not. And then how to share the videos. There are various platforms. Uh, what I did last semester, I created YouTube channel. Um, so I created a YouTube channel because I have other reasons for that. Uh, that is for the student's presentation, but I uh, exploit it in order to get the YouTube link because we know that we can't directly upload the files onto Elite because of the limitation of the file upload, right? So uh, what I did was I post on the YouTube channel and then I get the link of the YouTube and I embed the link in Elip. So that's how I could uh, share the videos on Elip. Uh, if let's say you don't want to have a YouTube channel for your course, I think you can use uh, your Google account. So you can assess the YouTube using your Google account. And in that, when you assess the, your account in YouTube, you can have the channel and from there you can actually post uh, the videos and get the link. So it's just actually for uh, the sake of the YouTube link that you, you will embed on Elip. So other platforms are like uh, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Telegram. And I think the students actually, they prefer um, leisure platforms like social media. So this is based on a survey that I did last semester. I use Instagram to post uh, the daily videos that I created and the feedback that I got from the students is very positive. They like actually the videos posted on Instagram because they do benefit during, uh, you know, during leisure time when they browse the posts uh, and uh, read the text and so on. Okay, uh, some examples of Doodly applications are just focus on how to use Doodly for communicating science. Uh, so these are some uh, ideas that I think uh, will be possible for Doodly. It's not just limited to this. Uh, perhaps if, let's say, you explore Doodly later, you can have more ideas how to use Doodly in science communication. Uh, the first one is animated mind map. This is not just science, maybe in other courses as well. So instead of having a static mind map, we can make it animated by uh, using Doodly, right? Uh, the second application is biochemical pathways. I think this would be useful for biochemistry. So you have a lot of pathways. Uh, so perhaps you can explain to the students in an animated uh, form. Yeah? You can put the things in uh, Doodly, using Doodly. And then chemical equations. For these two, biochemical pathways and chemical equations, uh, you have to download the structure of the chemical compounds beforehand uh, so that you can insert, you can just drag the things to uh, on your Doodly canvas, right? And any scientific processes that involves complex stages, perhaps, you know, uh, so that would be useful as well if you create uh, those videos using Doodly. So I have an example of uh, two videos that I created last semester for environmental uh, biotech course.
Okay, uh, so another example is this one. So I have to speed up the uh, the speed of the videos just to cut the time during this presentation. Uh, perhaps if you want to create the videos, you can slow down the things in order to make the things clear for the students. So that's it for Dudley. Um, I think I just proceed and I just entertain all the questions at the end. Yeah? All right, so I'll move to Spishalo. Uh, first, I'll talk about the introduction and how to use Spishalo and how to integrate Spishalo VoiceOver into Doodly and PowerPoint. The so Spishalo is way simpler than Doodly, so you can just like cover the things in just uh, a second. Okay, so what is Spishalo? Spishalo is another software. It is an artificial intelligence software that converts text into speech. So that's what it does. Um, and why Spishalo? Likewise, Doodly, I didn't do extensive review. I didn't compare Spishalo with other AI softwares. Uh, but what I can share the benefits is it's very easy, very straightforward, very quick, and it saves lots, lots of time than manual voice recording. So I did experience uh, recording manually for my uh, YouTube uh, statistic tutorial, and it takes so much time, actually, if you record manually. And when I first tried Spishalo, I, I really feel the huge difference between uh, manual recording and AI recording. So that's what I can say. It's very easy and it saves lots of time. And then um, Spishalo, even though it is uh, computerized, yeah, the voices are computerized, but it has 100% human sounding. So the moment you listen to the voice, you do not know whether it is uh, computerized or whether it's human. So it really looks as, uh, alike like human. And then it has uh, wide options of voices and accents. You can choose uh, whether you want male voice, uh, female voice, or even kids voice. And then you can choose uh, different accents, uh, British accent, British English, American, Australian. Uh, yeah, that's it. So different accents have different characters as well. So that's uh, the benefits of Spishalo. And it's not just actually for English, it also supports other languages. There are 24 languages that can be supported by Spishalo, including Malay language. Right, uh, so in the next slide, I will pass the slide to my assistant to guide you guys on how to use Spishalo uh, in a nutshell, okay. Uh, okay, so I just go straight away to the Spishalo uh, website. So once you have the details to log in, you go to spishalo.com and this is how it looks like, the website. So uh, what you can do, you can enter the text over here, right? You can enter the text and you can, uh, for example, if let's say I just have uh, a text here, here. Right, and you can also add pause, adjust the speech. Uh, adjust the speech is in terms of volume and speaking rate. Pause is when you add the pause uh, between sentences. For example, if you want to have a pause between these two things. Right, okay. And you can choose the language. Uh, these are all the selection of languages. So you can see English, there are many accents available. Let's say go to uh, US, right? Let's say, uh, and there are voices for each accent. Okay, so let's preview the voiceover. Hello students. 
Let's recap what we have learned in this no, time. Huh? No, no, we can hear it. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, that's uh, how. Can you hear my voice? Can. Okay, so that's how Hello, it students. works in this, yeah? Let's recap what we have learned in this topic. Like uh, how I this one, I want to show how it works on uh, PowerPoint. Hello, everyone. I'll be guiding you on how to use speech alone. So let's go through the steps. First, prepare the text that you want to be converted into a speech. Then, paste the text into speech alone. Select the language and voice. Then, generate the voiceover. It will be created in the form of MP3 file. Download the MP3. And now, you can upload the MP3 file in the video editor that you are working on. As simple as that. Guess what? The whole process takes less than a minute. So maybe, you can say goodbye to the manual recording. I am Billy, a speech -alo assistant. Stay safe, and have a nice day. Okay, so that's how it looks like. So I have, uh, I have shown how to use speech -alo on the website. Uh, now I'd like to show how to integrate the speech -alo voiceover into Doodly. So suppose we have uh, just now the canvas on Doodly, right? And you have the MP3 files downloaded. So what you have to do is uh, upload the MP3 on Doodly. So just click the sound button over here and then click the plus button and you can have the files in the list over here and you can drag, the, uh, drag and drop the file to the bottom most section here. It's not, this one is for the background music and this one is for the voiceover. So you can drag it to here and it will be in the video. So after you drag it, uh, you have to play around, you have to see how the animation sync with the voiceover by playing around with the duration of the images to be drawn. So that's how you integrate the special voiceover into Doodly. And then for the PowerPoint, so you create the slide. This is like how I did uh, for the slide before. And then you click insert, click um, from file, uh, the audio from file. And then you select the voiceover file in your computer. And then to save uh, the PowerPoint video uh, as a video, you click export and save as MP4. Or alternatively, you can just have the file, uh, the, the voiceover in the PowerPoint uh, file. Okay, so that's how you integrate the special voiceover into PowerPoint and uh, Doodly. Okay, so that's it from me. So basically, I have covered two things: Doodly and Spatialo. Uh, is there any questions from the audience? Uh, the, the, thank you, Dr. Narashiki. So I saw some question on chat box. The okay, first question from Dr. Siti Atma, so, uh, RP or paid Doodly. Right, this one actually yesterday uh, we discussed with Calm, with Sharifa Norizan, for Sharifa Norizan. She said, uh, Calm is considering to subscribe Doodly for Unima. So they are still, um, the cost, they said that it's, the cost was not, uh, the cost is not too expensive for them because in one, in one year is, yeah, and then the best thing is, one subscription can be used by multiple users then. Yes. Mm. Dr. Rafi'a said she need recording of the tutorial tadi. <laughs> oh, tutorial <laughs> mana? Yang step by step macam mana nak buat. Oh, okay. And speech hello maybe. Uh, Alright, I think this one yang... Is it free to import from Canva? I think you have answered it just now, right? Can, free kan? Yes, yes. Hmm... Okay, question for me. Uh, it and, has lagging issue. Yeah, because I used to use Fortune before. Yes. Bila we add so many things on, on the canvas, and then we, when we want to save it and want to play it, it become lagging, we have lagging problems. Sometimes it took ages to save it. Mm. Uh, as far as uh, I experienced, la, I don't have that really serious lagging issue. So... There is a glitch sometimes, but then you just restart back and then it's, it's fine back. 
So uh, tak ada serious lagging issue lah tak ada. Some uh, ada yang minta link for the YouTube video yang uh, Shikin dah ada. Dr. Shikin ada buat. Oh okay. So, yes. I can. You can yeah. share with us. Okay. So I think um, most of us are clear with on uh, maybe get an idea on how to use Doodly and Stitchello in uh, creating. I think the process is more useful for that one right. The process. Yes. Uh, Nama ni dan macam-macam lagi <coughs> And the best thing speech, uh, speech hello like we can change our voice <laughs> I like that one uh, Actually for Malay language uh, It has limited feature It only has one voice So oh, okay. Boleh jugalah but then uh, It's only one voice lah Tak apa-apa best macam English lah English banyak selection Okay, thank you Dr. Nara Shikin for great sharing on how to create some uh, material with, by using Doodly and Speech Hello. Um, uh, okay, so I think that's all for our presentation, for our sharing on the webinar today. I hope that all of us can get something that benefit for our online learning, online teaching and learning uh, next, starting next week. Uh, I will share the link for the presentation for the webinar today for all uh, FSTS members. Um, oh yeah, before we end, pack food is ready for all of us in the faculty, so you can collect it from from pejabat am. And if you have any problem regarding elip or online learning, and you don't know where. To uh, who to ask or where to go, you can contact me. Uh, I will help you to uh, find the solution for maybe for your problem something. Um, because next semester, I, I think uh, we need to do online learning again. So that's all from all of us, and thank you very much also to Dr. Rafia, Dr. Shikin for helping me sharing your experience for today webinar and also would like to say thank you for all the participants from uh, our faculty, uh, from other faculties and also from other universities. Um, <coughs> it's all from me and thank you again. Assalamualaikum and good, uh, good evening.